Uh, well, I'm a multi-hyphenate, uh, 20 years now in the mental health industry. I own a small private practice in New York City as a mental health psychotherapist. I'm a certified life coach, and now I'm an author of my first book, Adulting as a Millennial. Oh, wow. Good for you. And what got you into the mental health field? Hmm. Well, the short of it is I knew really early in life that I wanted to be a professional helper. And I did everything to become a registered nurse until I was maybe in my second year of nursing school and realized this was not for me. But I still loved being able to help people to heal themselves. So I went into social work graduated with a human services bachelor's, went into my master's program right after that at Fordham University in Manhattan and got my master's in social work. And I thought I was done, but I was drawn back in. So maybe four or five years later, I went back to school and um, became an analyst um, in psychoanalysis. And then maybe Five or so years after that, I went back one more time and, and received my certificate as a spiritual life coach. So it's been a long journey of helping people to discover their life's purpose and um, to also heal some generational trauma. And um, that's the short of it. Wow. Of it. That's incredible. I mean, how... It- it's just incredible. I have like no, I, no, nothing else to say. That's amazing. And you're helping so many people with what you do. Yeah, I'm, I'm really fortunate because when I realized many, many years ago that I wanted to be a psychotherapist, I was around a lot of professional helpers. <coughs> Excuse me. And I still had the opportunity in many ways to interface with the medical system because I did home care. So I worked with nurses, I coordinated care with nurses and physicians. And that was really great for my career because I didn't want to completely leave my nursing background behind, but I didn't want to go back to school for that. So I was fortunate enough to be able to then meet other people um, who had a private practice and that gave me hope that I could do that too. So um, not knowing a lot of people at the time who were as young as I was when I did my psychoanalytic program, um, I was really intrigued by analysis. Um, I went into my own psychoanalysis for three years, three times a week. And um, in the beginning, it was very, very helpful to understanding the mind and how people uh, do things unconsciously and um, the lack of insight I think we all have about who we are uh, and what little we honestly know about ourselves. Um, so now that I'm, I'm able to do my work remotely, which I was doing before quarantine, it's really helped me to reach more people. And my coaching business has also blossomed because now my book has helped to reach people in other countries. And I also have been doing some international coaching previously. So now being online every day, like everybody, uh, people get to see me more and hear me more. Nice. And what's the difference between life coaching and actual therapy? Yeah, I get that question a lot. The difference is, I say to people, there's some overlap, but here's the distinct difference between the two. Psychotherapy is slower in terms of its pace. It deals primarily with your feelings and the unconscious, and that takes time to uncover. It doesn't have this urgency that people, I think, get when they're in coaching to achieve a goal or a specific set of goals in a time-specific uh, timeline. So coaching is very goal oriented, is driven by a timeline and milestones. Um, it really helps people to get clear where they may feel stuck in their career relationships or their health. And so from the very first point of contact after the intake, we get very um, direct with task and, and accountability. Um, a short time frame sort of outlines the work and it's, it's driven by these very specific narrow goals. And it's different in that pace than therapy is. Nice. Very nice. I used to go to a life coach and I never actually knew the difference, but I loved it because it, you're right. It did make me take accountability for my actions and I learned more about myself. Yeah, I absolutely, absolutely loved it. And there's yeah. so much going on in the news right now with COVID and in the media, which I do with Will and Jada with their entanglement. 
could you please explain what that is exactly and how people in that same situation can deal with it? Yeah, I thought it was interesting when I saw the interview on Red Table Talk that she used entanglement. I, I think it was a very um, evasive way of not addressing some of the seriousness of what her behaviors demonstrated. And this is something that I, I share a lot on my platforms because I coach and I mentor people in mental health, especially newcomers to the field. And there is a lot of potential harm that can go on when relationships are not clearly defined. And yes, we understand that Jada is um, a helper and, and she's an influencer and she has a lot of power, I'm sure, to motivate people for change. But she, as far as I'm aware, is not a professional licensed uh, provider. And um, the way she described what Will and, and uh, her family were doing for this, this uh, R&B singer, August Alsina, was very noble. But the lines of being in a helping position where she could influence change and blurring that within an intimate romantic relationship with him is dangerous and harmful, especially when someone who's vulnerable is in the process of becoming well. And I think the term entanglement just focused mostly on her dissociation um, with what actually happened in terms of the the um, advantage that she took of this vulnerable person. And it didn't directly deal with that part in the interview, as opposed to uh, her being in a marriage with her husband that may or may not have been clearly defined in terms of openness and getting involved in a, a relationship that then triangulated this third person into her marriage. And so when I speak about it in terms of my position as a, a mandated reporter and a mental health clinician, I speak of it from the point of the risk that people uh, put themselves at when they don't clearly define their relationships with their clients. This was not a client-patient situation, but it still was a situation that Jada was in a position to help and she blurred the lines of distinction when she intimately became involved with this person. And that, when someone is vulnerable, is potentially harmful to their healing and their, psych their psyche. And how could someone in this situation deal with it? Like someone in August's situation, how could they deal with it in the future if, God forbid, someone else is in this situation? Well, part of what... Excuse <coughs> me, having so many allergies today. <clears throat> Part of what I recognize about this story is very common to people who've been traumatized. And this is where coaching can have a uh, perspective where you can understand what trauma is. But this is where the, the distinct difference in not coaching someone with a psychiatric illness or a substance abuse history um, would, would be inappropriate. So in a therapeutic realm, when someone has already in their lifetime been traumatized, they're at more risk of being re-traumatized. And that's ultimately what were the underpinnings to me of this story is that this young man had a history of trauma, which he had already uh, discussed on a previous episode of Red Table Talk and was, um, under the influence of substances for some years and was seemingly very unhealthy when he came to Jaden Will for support. And I think in terms of being in the process of healing, it's really going to matter that you do have professional intervention so that you understand the history of trauma and its impact on your decision making, um, your executive functioning, the relationships that you're drawn to, um, those things would help build insight into someone being able to understand their own unconscious motivation, um, the relationship they tend to be drawn to, uh, some negative behavioral patterns that 
need to be modified um, as preventative care. And so for me moving forward, it would really mean having professional intervention work through some of those things so that he's much more aware of, um, of the vulnerability that, that comes along with being a person who's in recovery. Makes sense to me. And you said you also have a book out. Tell me a little bit about yes. that. I'm really excited about this book. It's uh, titled Adulting as a Millennial, A Guide to Everything Your Parents Didn't Teach You. It was written primarily for millennials, since that's a large part of the audience that I speak to and, and the population that I serve. But it was also written for people who are not millennials, because I see a common thread among millennials, but also even people who are Generation Xers. And what I see are people who are really suffering with anxiety and imposter syndrome and lackluster relationships. So this book is really a guide to navigating life, becoming more of who you are, and deciding for yourself the type of life you want to live. So I use my life um, as, as one um, way of guiding people through journeys of healing and discovery and self-discovery and becoming more comfortable with the uncomfortable. Um, I really help to give some, some tools and some provide some questions and some scenarios for people to contemplate. How see, to the be, dogs are really happy. <laughs> yeah. To, um, to see how they can be more present in their lives with mindfulness. And so this book is really going to, I hope, help lots of people. Um, and help people to understand their place in the world and to live with more meaning and love. Very good. And my dogs are really big fans already. So we're really happy about that. And where can people buy this book? Get it on my website right now. We're doing autographed copies through lifecoachasha.com. And as of this week, we're happy to say that it's available on Kindle at amazon.com too. Very good. And where can people find your life coaching services? Is that on the same website? Yep. So lifecoachasha.com. And I'm also available on Twitter every day at Asha Tarry. That's T-A-R-R-Y. And I'm also very active on LinkedIn and Instagram at Asha Tarry Mental. Perfect. And one thing I like to ask my people I interview before I let them go is tell me a fun fact about yourself that might surprise people. Hmm. As much as I'm a social being, I really like time alone. Yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. I'm the same way. Mm -hmm. Helps me be more <laughs> creative and introspective. And I just, I, I enjoy my time by myself, but I also am a social being too. I like that. I'm the same exact way. But thank you, Asha, for taking the time today. I really appreciate you and stay safe. Thank you, you too. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Sammy.